What's up everyone? I hope you all are doing well. And today I'm going to be talking about return offers. And you know how important that is, especially because it's internship season and everybody wants to know on how to land the return offer. But today I'm going to be doing it with a twist because I'm going to be talking about my own personal experience at Facebook and why in particular I did not get my return offer. Emotional, damn it! So I hope that this video is going to be insightful for you and what to do and what not to do. So let's just talk about the Facebook internship program in general or the Meta internship program. And it's a very competitive program to get into and it's very prestigious as we all know. But the thing is that once, you know, I got into that internship, I was the only intern in the team. So it might have seemed to me that, you know, I'm against no one. So no one is my competition. And I was told the same, that I'm competing against nobody. Psych! That's the wrong number! But that's not completely the truth because how recruiting at Facebook actually works is is that you're not going to be competing for a return offer for your team, for the team that you're interning at. Rather, so for example, I was a front-end engineering intern. So I will be recruiting for front-end engineer full-time. I won't be recruiting for the same team. I'll be recruiting just for the general position. So whoever there is, like any front-end engineering intern all across Facebook, they're all going to be up against me for that return offer so that is something that i just wanted to clarify if you're interning at facebook this might be useful information for you so how the team assignments work is you're going to recruit for the full-time position that may be the sde position or the front-end engineering position and once you have that you're actually going to go through a boot camp once you start working at facebook and that is going to be about a one month boot camp where you'll be allowed to work with a lot of different teams allowed to be work on their different projects and then you'll be allowed to choose as well amongst what team or what project or what site of the field you want to join so i think that is a plus point at facebook but for the internship program you must know this that you are you are going to be up against all the other interns who are currently interning at facebook now another thing that i would like to note is that i was a front-end engineering intern so that pipeline is completely different from the sde pipeline so that is something that you might want to keep in mind as you watch along this video now at any internship who is recruiting for a general position who's not recruiting for the same thing that you're interning at the best idea for you would be to choose an office for your return offer that has the most openings. Now, what Facebook did for me is that they gave me an option. They gave me an option to choose an office location for which I'll be recruiting for the full-time return offer. Now, what's the best thing to do over here is to choose the biggest office. So for example, I what I did was that I chose the Menlo Park office because at Menlo Park, there's going to be a lot of recruiting. There's going to be a lot of openings. And this matters because Facebook, for example, they're not going to allocate you to another office if there are no positions open. Rather, they're just going to reject you. Nice. So you must keep this in mind while you're doing your internship and while you're opting for your office location. Now, my personal situation was a bit unfortunate as well because according to my manager, the front-end engineering pipeline is different, right? It's not the same as the STE pipeline. The return offer ratio is not going to be the same. So that is something you must keep in mind. So what happened for me was that my manager told me that the year that I was interning at, which was 2021, there were actually less recruiting happening for front-end engineering full-time positions. <laughs> So there was a lot of intense competition amongst all of the interns. And what that does is, is that it leaves the decision to little nitty gritty details in your code. The competition, as the competition rises, they're going to be looking deeper into your code. They're going to be comparing very deeply against other interns and, and as well as the general quality. And so that will make a big factor in your decision making process on whether you'll get the return offer or not. Now at Facebook, there was a general rule that all the interns have to write at least a minimum of 5,000 lines of code. And even though this is not really a good measure of your performance for example me personally i had about 18000 lines of code <laughs> boy. and 82 commits during my 3 months of internship well not even 3 months it's a, it was about like 2 and a half months because like the last 10 days of the internship is just for you to socialize and for you to enjoy so the program is about 2 and a half months but that is not a good measure of my performance because you know in front end there're going to be more lines as well because you know if i'm writing react for example there're going to be a lot of you know additional lines that are going to be added in my code so i won't say that that is a good measure but how they really compare you is, is that they're going to view your first few commits and the quality of your first few commits that you have made. And then they're going to view the quality of the last few commits that you have made. So what they're trying to actually see is that the progress that you have made. So for example, if you were writing, you know, big commits in the start, or if you were writing, you know, you weren't covering all the test cases and you weren't writing description well enough, but in the end you were doing those well, they're going to see that as a plus point because they know that you have progress, they know that you have somehow, you know, 
learned all of those things that are required for the company culture and they're going to assess you like that and now for the commits what really matters is as that you have very small commits because what really happens is that the engineers who are going to be reviewing your code they don't want you know 100 plus lines of code if you know it has 10 to 15 lines it is very easy for them to review they're going to have a much easier time they're not going to get angry on you ah oh, shit here we go again. If you have covered all of the test cases and written down how you have covered them, all of them, and you have written descriptively of what this commit is going to change into the code base, then that is going to be a good commit. What a bad commit is that you're writing a lot of code, you're not covering the test cases, it's not descriptive enough, and you're not using good coding practices. So what is good coding practices? Well, you must be naming your variables very, very descriptively. Now, it doesn't matter how long the variable name is. Make sure that it's very, very descriptive. It doesn't matter if it's long. Just make it super descriptive so that that you know or the other person knows what that variable name is actually going to be doing within the code what you want to be doing is you want to break down your code into functions and you want to make separate working components so that the engineers who are reviewing they know that this chunk of code does this separately and it's going to be connected to the other components which is going to make a functional part of your code so this is very important because they're going to view these nitty-gritty details a lot and this is going to be a big factor into the decision making process on whether you will get the return offer or whether you will not now this was my first big internship so i came in having no idea how to write good coding practices or how to you know handle it properly so my first few commits they were disastrous i was writing bad variable names i was doing a lot of big commits so it was like 80 90 lines i think i'm having a midlife crisis i was like focusing on doing the whole task in one commit so i gradually improved upon that and, and my manager was really really happy with my progress at the end of my internship but one thing that i didn't really improve on was that and this is a really major mistake so i didn't take it as seriously as I should have but what I did was that so let's say that I was making a mistake on some part of my commit stack right so what I did was that to fix that mistake I would fix it on top of the stack instead of fixing it there and then so that would basically mess up the history of the whole commits because when any engineer is going to see that particular commit they're going to notice that mistake and they're not going to be sure of whether it's going to be fixed up top so what you want to be doing is is that you want to fix it there and then and these are also important for small mistakes I'm not saying that I made like logic mistake what my mistakes were that maybe i didn't camel case a variable so i fixed it on top of the stack and this was a very very critical part of my report that i did not do this well and maybe it was a big factor on why i didn't land my return offer if i'm being honest with you in general at the end of the day facebook has a very hard working culture you're going to be moving really fast it's a part of their work culture so what you're going to be doing is is that they will actually require you to push a lot of code really really fast and this will put you in a habit to write code really fast you want to do more in your internship for example me i just didn't do the projects that i was just given i did more i wanted more i asked for more i was like you know i self participated in all of all of the meetings and all of the demos what you want to do is that you want to demo all of the tasks that you're doing in a weekly demo meetings now these meetings are usually optional but you still want to be participating in those because it will help you to get notice amongst the team it will help you to get some reputation as an intern and it will help in your final report as well that is going to be really important for your return offer now this whole fast life culture at facebook really added this into my mind a hackathon mindset i just wanted to get work done i didn't plan it ahead i just wanted to dive right into it code it out and just get it there and push it out for the engineers to review but what really this did for me is that it delayed my efficiency it delayed my work because i was going through a lot of code reviews one week of worth of code reviews because I had to go back and forth, back and forth because of the bad decisions that I had made. Make sure you're planning out your components really well. You're planning out your APIs. You're planning out your code in terms of working separate functional components. And this is very important because it will help you to write clean code. It will help to smoothen your code review process and it will fasten you to ship more code. Don't get into this wrong mindset. The writing code fastly with a hackathon mindset to get it done into maybe like 48 hours will help you to push more code at Facebook or any other company for a fact because it won't what it will do is it will actually lengthen your code review process so what you want to do is is to plan it out first just take a deep breath and plan out what you're going to be doing plan out how it's all going to work and come together and then dive into your code also discuss it with your manager that's something that i didn't really do as well as well because you want to work back and forth with your manager on what approach you're going to take and because they're experienced they will give you more tips and they will guide you into the right direction so you're also learning those good practices so in general at the end of the day you know i 
participated a lot. I pushed more code than I was expected. I really did extra work apart from that that was given to me. And my manager had really good feedback for me. But at the end of the day, it really came down to these nitty gritty details that I mentioned, such as those that, you know, rushing the problem, not really focusing on fixing the problem there and then on the commit stack. And these nitty gritty details maybe just resulted in me not landing my return offer. I lost my wife, my son, my family. I lost my job, a good career over at Facebook. So make sure that you're really focusing on your code quality. I know that, you know, it's going to be in your mind that you want to push more code. You want to get more work done, but really focus on the quality of work that you're doing because it will help you to really be efficient and push more code as well. Because the code review process at most companies and all of the companies is going to be very, very brutal. It's going to require you to go back and forth a lot. And if you're writing bad code with bad practices, it's not going to help you at all. So I hope that you found this video to be insightful. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and leave down any comments down below if you have any particular questions about my Facebook internship experience. I'll make a separate video on my internship experience as well and how, how it went for me. But I just wanted to, you know, point out this important topic about return offers. And I hope that, you know, you have more idea about what to do and what not to do after watching this video. And as always, see you guys in the next video. Thank you.